Good afternoon. It is 4 o'clock on January 16th, 2024, and I welcome you all to this meeting of the Conway City Council. Thank you for being here. We have uh, Matt Wilson from the Ecclesia Church who has agreed to uh, bring our invocation and lead our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you so much for being here. You know, well, let's start with the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. <coughs> Father, we come and we thank you, Father, because we are a blessed city. Father, we are a blessed community. Father, we are a strong community. Father, we thank you for the members of our community that, that come together and make it as beautiful and make it as wonderful a place as it is. But Father, we know that we stand in your blessing for this to be possible. We thank you for our leaders, Father. We thank you for the leadership that's provided on a daily basis, though what's seen and what's unseen. And Father, we pray tonight for their wisdom. Father, we pray for their guidance. We pray for their strength. We pray for their encouragement and their courage. Father, we pray for your will to be done in all aspects of our life. And Father, we ask that our spirits are always submissive to you above all others. Bring us peace, bring us unity, and guide us together as one people that stands in the love of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you. Next on the agenda is the administration of the oath of office. Uh, three of us were um, were given the oath on our last meeting, and Council Member Larry White was ill at that time. So we will now all witness his oath of office. Councilman White. I'm pretty sure I go. Where would you like to start? <sighs> Exercise the trust, exercise the trust proposed, in me, proposed in me and will use, and will use my, best endeavor my best endeavor to preserve the peace, to preserve the peace to carry into effect, to carry into effect according, to law, according to law the purposes, the purposes for, which I've been elected. for which I have been elected. So help me God. Approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? <clears throat> Mr. White. May I move that we approve the agenda? Is there a second? Ms. Butler. I second this motion. A properly seconded motion to approve the agenda as it is set forth. All in favor, please indicate your favor with showing your hand. Motion carries unanimously. 
Uh, item five is relative to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Goldfinch. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second Mr. Goldfinch's Mm -hmm. Mr. Goldfinch's motion. All in favor of also approving the consent agenda, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously again. Item six is the election of a mayor pro tem. Is there a motion? Mayor, I move to uh, elect Larry White, mayor pro tem, by acclamation. Thank you, sir. Uh, I've heard a motion to elect Larry White, mayor pro tem, by acclamation. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Thank you so much. There's a properly seconded motion to elect Larry White to the position of mayor pro tem by acclamation. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion carries. Mr. Larry White will serve as mayor pro tem during the calendar year 2024. Congratulations, Mr. White. <laughs> No, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Item seven is public input. This is an opportunity for anyone to approach this council on just about any subject. The exception being that it has to do with an individual employee. Of course, we'd have to take this up in a more private venue. Um, public input um, is limited to five minutes. There are monitors everywhere to keep help you keep up with your timing. If you're finishing a sentence, I'll probably let you complete it, but I'm going to pretty much hold you to the five minutes. Um, and the final thing I need to say is that public input is not interactive. We won't go back and forth trying to answer questions, but um, our administrative staff has business cards for all of the department heads and all the council members, and it may be that they'll hand you a card, and every once in a while the answer to the question is so simple that I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is. But um, we are now opening public input. Is there anyone present who would like to speak under public input? Yes, sir. Would you please come forward? And um, we'll ask you please to give us your full name and your address, please. And the, the whole idea about that, Mike, is we can probably hear you, but there are people online that want to hear you as well. No problem. Uh, my name is Brian Vaughn. I'm with Palmetto Taps over on 909 Fourth Avenue. Uh, my concern with the uh, is with the location of the new earth. Um, the proposal right now is literally 15 feet from my patio. I'm trying to get a business opened, and they want to put essentially a dumpster right next to where people will be eating and drinking. So I'm proposing that they need to find a new location, something that's not right next to a restaurant. There's other concerns about the, the size of the building that they're putting or the walls are putting up with the slope of the street within that area. You know, I've got an eight foot high portion of my fence I was approved for, but where they're gonna be is 12 feet at the corner. I uh, went out and checked it out today. It seems like a massive uh, wall that's gonna cause more traffic problems coming on from Kingston onto Ford. So there's a, uh, the water retention issue with that too. I mean, I know anybody building around there would have to look at what they're gonna do with any of the runoff coming from anywhere else. That wasn't brought up in the cab meeting, which I know wasn't the place, but uh, we had a big discussion last week on this. So that's kind of where my proposal is. They, they really need to find a different location. And there's a couple city locations they could probably use, different parking lots that wouldn't be directly next to a patio. Thank you. I'm going to recommend that you uh, actually speak with our, our city administrator. Uh, a lot of thought and um, consideration has been put into that, but we'll, we'll certainly discuss it with you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak under public input? Mr. Goldfinch. Mayor, I move we close public input at this time. I'm sorry, there is somebody else. Ms. Wyman, <coughs> Ms. Fuller, I'm so sorry. Ms. Priscilla Fuller. I'll save my mother. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't notice you, so sorry. No, thank you, um, Mayor, Council, and um, citizens. Um, I know first your, of all, I know, oh, I know your name, but I didn't My name is Priscilla Wyman Fuller. I reside at 140 Cart Crossing in Conway, South Carolina. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Mayor, 
for being at the press conference, um, I guess two weeks ago, regarding a situation that had occurred, I guess on the outskirts of Conway, where there was the cross burning. And um, to a lot of people it might not be that important, but it was very significant and it really did not, um, it did not really um, stand up to who we are as people in Conway or Horry County. Um, since I've been back to Conway, I've been really uh, amazed at the progress and, uh, in terms of people and also race relations. But I know we still have a long way to go. But it's important that people speak out, and I was just so happy that our mayor came out and did speak against it and also spoke in favor of a crime, a hate crime law, which a lot of us didn't know that uh, South Carolina was one of two states in the whole country that didn't have it. So I want to thank you for that. And I also want to thank you, uh, Mayor, for coming out um, to celebrate Martin Luther King Day, the celebration. And that's important. Some people, it's just a day off from work. But a lot of significant things happen during this era. And there's a lot of things that we still have to work on. But let's start with what happened and celebrating someone who made great strides in race relations. And it's good to see the mayor, and it's good to see Larry, and it's good to see Amanda, but it's also good to see other councilmen. So one of the things that we don't want, we don't want our citizens thinking that this is a tale of two cities. We want everyone being appreciative of the people that we've elected, and we want our elected officials appreciative and uh, of the people in Conway and being able to serve these people. So I, I want to thank you for um, your contributions. And I think we have a lot of work to do. And I'm really um, looking forward to working with people in the council and the government this year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Um, I do want to mention that um, Council Member uh, William Goldfinch was also there present. And um, he's not on the council anymore. <clears throat> just, just to make that note, please. Yes, ma'am. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak under public input? Yes, sir, please. No, oh, no, you're leaving. Okay. <laughs> ma'am? <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm, I am well, thank you, and I hope you are too. Yes, thank you. Um, I am speaking on behalf of Marshall and Susan McMillan, who own the Jerry Cox, and who owns the Jerry Cox building. And would you please um, give us your name? My, and I'm address. sorry, my name is Phyllis Nye, and I'm speaking on behalf of them. They could not be here today, they had to be out of town and didn't quite make it back in time. We are also addressing the uh, placement of the earth beside Pat Palmetto Taps patio. We have also compiled three other options for the uh, city to consider for placement of the earths that would not be next to a patio where people will be eating and dining outdoors. And we have sent those um, to each of the members of council and we too will take the recommendation and of course send this also to the city administrator, a copy of this. But we really feel that our city is a great place to be. And when the minister was speaking earlier, it is a great place to be and we do have great leadership. But we also need to come together and work on our businesses and make sure that everyone is in agreement to helping each other. And that's what I think we're looking at here. Do we want to kill someone who's trying to open a business? And it's a great business for the city of Conway and a unique business. Do we want to do that? Or do we want to consider that we could do, have other options? And that's all we're asking, is we're asking that other options be considered instead of one plan and one plan only. I was a teacher for 38 years, so I know that flexibility and being willing to change is very, very important. So that's what I'm asking today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And thank you for your leadership again. Thank you, Ms. Nye. Anyone else, please? Yes, sir, please. <clears throat> Remember to please give us your name and address. Hi. Uh, my name is Greg Bryson. I am of 2697 Green Pond Circle out, uh, off of 378. And uh, I come to speak today about the uh, tributary plan development. And I wanted to thank specific, specifically Ms. Hux and all the work that her team has been doing with the, uh, the planning commission. 
I got involved in the project, uh, I don't know, fall of 2023 at the, one of the first planning commission meetings when it came up, came up for discussion. And we've been involved ever since. Watched some of you discuss in, uh, in the uh, executive session your uh, thoughts about the project as well. And I'm excited to see uh, where we end up with this. I come uh, specifically, you know, we, some of the concerns that we had were water and transportation and uh, then as we got down the line a little bit more toward density of the lots and what would the proposals would be and how that would change our community and stretch it. Um, and I know we've, we've just gone, undergone, you know, we, there's building everywhere uh, that we see construction everywhere with uh, new developments inside the boundaries of Conway City and just outside in Horry County. And so I know that there's been a deliberate um, effort by the Planning Commission to, to do great growth for, for the city of Conway. And we, uh, we encourage that. Uh, I'm on the board also of the, uh, the homeowners board of Michaela Acre subdivision. And I think you are all aware of that we abut the, uh, one of the properties that's proposed within the uh, plan development. Um, the property that abuts our neighborhood is a, uh, ha has been annexed with, into the city of Conway, and it is an R1. And there are people who have brought, bought their properties adjoining that, that property, knowing that um, and there's a proposed access road into this uh, third phase, um, knowing that that property was R1 within the city of Conway's codes of uh, restrictions, which were 50 foot lots and uh, low, low uh, density um, housing. And so we would ask the council to be mindful of that as they approach the uh, acceptance of this total package as a plan development, which gives the, the builder the ability to make all sorts of decisions with the county, with the city's on, uh, oversight, of course. but. Um, one of the things that we were worried about as a small community was, you know, we have 110 houses in our, in our community, and as proposed now, the, um, the lot that would adjoin us that would have the access road is proposed for 148 townhomes or uh, higher density units within the proposed development. I'm sure you've seen all this. Um, I know that uh, the Planning Commission recommended that the um, the access road not go through, um, and that was what we discussed at the planning commission. But I heard from you at your executive session that that was a that's a pretty big deal with some of the other developments that have had uh, have gone up. And so, in that, uh, we would recommend that uh, if the access road is is necessary uh, for the city and the city's uh, facilities and, and fire and and water. Um, that, that that portion of the plan development stay as an R1 as, as um, it, it has already been zoned. That being 50, 50 foot lots and um, that would significantly, I think, change the plan of the developer. So that's just uh, an ask or, a, or, and I think that's within um, we, what we'll hear in the rest of the package. It's sort of weird to talk in front of uh, a proposal, but I, <laughs> Uh, I'm a teacher too, so we do our homework, so I read through the pack and the, and the proposed um, changes. So I do appreciate your time uh, and, and hearing us, and, and the Planning Commission's been really uh, fantastic in listening to all the community in, uh, input and making a great plan based on that. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Girlfriend, I think it's your turn. <laughs> Mayor, I move that we close public input at this time. Ms. Dwight. I'm sorry. I'll Ms. second. Ms. Hardwick. Thank you so much. We're properly second in motion to close public input. All in favor, please indicate so with the showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item 8 is a special presentation uh, which has to do with the Employee of the Month for January 2024 from Public Service. Mr. Ashley Smith. All right, tonight uh, we'd like to recognize and express our sincere appreciation uh, to Veronica Ricardo. 
Veronica thinks she's here to present a program about <laughs> the Lucha Wrestling at the Sports and Fitness Center. <laughs> so we, we kind of got her. Veronica started with our team as a part-time employee um, in 2017. I uh, became a full-time employee in 2023. Uh, Veronica was asked to help with uh, Dia Los Muertos, and for my non-Spanish speaking friends, that is the Day of the Dead. Um, that was held on November the 4th, and also the Three Kings Day on January the 4th. Uh, Veronica went above and beyond uh, the celebration uh, by demonstrating exceptional leadership and communicating during this event. And you know, we're trying to do more special events uh, for everybody in our community, and she was very vital uh, for making that happen. Um, she's a very valuable asset to the city um, as we try to do programs for everybody in the city. Um, so on behalf of City Conway and Sports and Fitness Center, um, I'd like to thank you for your valuable contributions and dedication to our success. To show you our appreciation, I'd like to present you with the Public Service Employee of the Month. Veronica, would you like to give us a speech? I appreciate the award and I am very glad that I work for the city of Conway. Uh, most of you don't know, but I always had three or two jobs, so I actually up and decided to have one job, and I choose this one. So I'm very glad that I picked this one. Thank you. Veronica, we're really glad you chose us. And thank you for all your contributions. And congratulations. Item nine. Public hearing and first reading of Ordinance ZA 2020-40205A of a request by Lennar Carolinas LLC and Thomas and Hutton to enter into a development agreement with the City of Conway for property located at or near the corner of Highway 378 and Juniper Bay Road, Highway 378 and Airport Road, Dayton Drive, and Dunn Shortcut Road. Shortcut Road. The PINs are listed in the agenda. Uh, Ms. Hux, thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, and this one, while it is advertised for first reading and public hearing, if you would like, I can combine this one and kind of explain, you know, give an overview of this Please. one and the next item, which is first reading of the annexation and rezoning request. So maybe I should read that into the record as well. Item 10, is, is that the one you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so we are in concert going to be considering item 10 for first reading a which is first reading of ordinance za 2024-0205b to annex approximately 486 plus or minus acres of property located at or near the corner of highway 378 and juniper, juniper bay road highway 378 and airport road dayton drive and dunn shortcut road and the pins are listed in the agenda and rezone from Ori County Commercial Forest Agriculture and Ori County Highway Commercial and Ori County Residential, no mobile homes allowed, SF40, to the City of Conway Heavy Industrial, City of Conway Low to Medium Density Residential, and City of Conway High Density Residential Districts to the City of Conway Plan Development District. I think I read that wrong. But to avoid me having to read all of it over again, the, the combined Ori County current designations and those things I said about the city of Conway, meaning heavy industrial, low to medium density residential, and high residential are now being considered as city of Conway plan development. I think I got that right. Mr. Goldberg. Mayor, could I request that we combine item 9 and item 10A? Go ahead and have the public hearing, and then I was going to defer it. All right, very good. Absolutely. So is there a motion to first combine them? That would be that was that, that, was, that was my motion okay. was to combine them and then have the public <coughs> hearing. Um, and then I move that we defer uh, voting on either item um, until we can workshop this out a little more. Thank you so much. Is there a second? A second. <coughs> Sorry. Go ahead. 
We have properly seconded motion to do all those things, uh, to <laughs> to combine to combine the issues and to defer uh, any further decision until such time as we've had another workshop. Uh, are there questions or any concerns before I call a vote? There being none, all in favor, please indicate so with a show of your hand. Mayor, before you defer it, you yes. need to have a public hearing and then hold the vote on the full motion. So, okay. I'll regroup. So, first we'll vote on the combining them, okay? And then we'll do hold a- Hold the public hearing. Hold the public hearing, and then vote on the full motion. Okay, thank you so much. All in favor of combining those issues, please indicate so with a show of your hand. That motion carries unanimously. So now, thank you so much for being here. So now we will entertain, uh, we'll open a public uh, hearing on this issue. If there's anyone present who would like to speak either in favor of or against uh, these issues, uh, you will now have an opportunity to voice your pleasure or displeasure. A couple of people who spoke under public input uh, made reference to these, we certainly will consider what you've said. Is there anybody in addition that might want to make any comments for the council? There being no one, is there a motion to, Mr. Mr. White? We have moved that we close public input. Or public hearing? Hearing, excuse me. Okay. Thank you. And Ms. Helms? Uh, seconded motion. We have a probably seconded motion to close the public hearing at this time. All in favor? And Kate said with a strong in your hand. Motion carries unanimously. And now we'll entertain a motion to defer any decision on this matter until such time. The motions have been made already. Was it seconded? Ms. Butler. Now it's seconded. We have a motion that's been properly seconded to defer any further uh, decision making on this item until such time as the council has had an opportunity to hear more in a workshop. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item B is first reading of ordinance ZA 2024-0205C to annex approximately eight and 96 hundredths acres of property located at or near the intersection of Mill Pond Road and Highway 501, also known as Church Street. Uh, the PIN number has been listed in the agenda and rezoned from Ory County Highway Commercial to City of Conway Highway Commercial Zoning District, Ms. Hux. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this property is located between parcels that are all within the city limits, all of which are zoned Highway Commercial. The property is currently zoned Ory County Highway Commercial, and the applicant has requested to be zoned City of Conway Highway Commercial upon annexation. Surrounding uses include vacant property, a gas station convenience store, and is across from a coffee shop and a restaurant. The city's future land use map of the comprehensive plan identifies the entire property as conservation preservation due to the existence of the AE flood zone and a floodway on a small portion of the property. If first reading is approved, a future land use map amendment will also be brought forward for consideration, which has already been to Planning Commission, where they also recommended approval. The proposed use is medical, specifically a freestanding ER. However, specific uses are not typically considered when a rezoning is requested. All uses that are permitted in the Highway Commercial District could be permitted on this property if the request is approved. An amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance was adopted last year regarding the split zoning of parcels, which in general prohibits split zoning of parcels, but the amendment carved out an exception for properties that contain environmentally sensitive areas, such as wetlands, flood zones, or floodways, in that the portions containing these areas could be zoned conservation preservation upon annexation. Planning Commission recommended approval of the request to rezone the property as highway commercial upon annexation, but also recommended that the portions within a floodway or the AE flood zone be zoned conservation preservation upon annexation. Staff recommends the same, as a majority of the property would be zoned highway commercial, and the applicant intends to combine this property with the adjacent property already in the city limits and zoned highway commercial. Should Council approve the request as recommended by Planning Commission and staff, 
The ordinance that is in, in your packet would be updated to reflect the split zoning of the property upon second reading. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Ms. Hutz. Are there any questions? Mr. Goldman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ms. Hutz, um, <coughs> suffice it to say, if we denied the rezoning, they're just going to build the ER in the county, right? Correct. Yeah. With, with that, I would move that we uh, approve said, said motion. Thank you, Mr. Goldman. Mr. White. My question was about the surrounding properties. Would the building on this property have any effect on the flooding of other areas in that area? Well, the alternate goal is that it would not. Um, I do have Katie um, Dennis here. She is a certified floodplain manager, and she can answer any specific questions you have. The ultimate goal is that they are not going to be building within a floodway or a flood zone, and having those properties, those small portions that are zone conservation preservations will aid in that. Additionally, critical care facilities are governed a little bit different when it mm -hmm. comes to FEMA standards, so they could potentially be limited to further to where the building could be located. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, is there a second? I'll second Mr. Goldfinch's motion uh, to move forward. Um, unless there are more questions or concerns, um, I'll call a vote. All who are in favor of, and this is first reading, yes. All in favor of approving first reading of this ordinance, please indicate so by showing your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Hutz. Item C, first reading of ordinance 2024-0205D, amending the business license ordinance to update the class schedule in accordance with the Business License Standardization Act, 2020 Act number 176. Ms. Williams. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The Standardization Act requires that each municipality adopt by ordinance the latest business license class schedule, and this is done every two years by the Municipal Association. So staff recommends approving first reading. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I move that um, we approve first reading of this ordinance. Mr. Jordan. I will second the motion. Um, there are probably seconded motion, but just in case, are there questions or concerns before I call a vote? There being none, all in favor, please indicate so to showing your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much, Ms. Williams. having trouble finding my next page. Thank you so much. Um, what is it? Item 11, are we there already? Yeah. Yes. Item 11A, consideration of a special event running with my peeps, April 13th, 2024. Mr. Rogers. Good afternoon. This is a special event request from a father's oh, place for running with my peeps on April 13th. It would be a 5K that would uh, run from about 7 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. and would involve road closures that you can see above from 7.45 to about 9.30. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Are there questions or concerns? Mr. Jordan. Question. Um, the, this calls for the closure of Laurel and Is that good? <laughs> Uh, port most of Elm Street from the Marina the Ninth and uh, portions of Laurel. Uh, that's been a, I've gotten a few calls about that being a, being a concern on a Saturday morning. The event, great, um, but the concern was Saturday morning in April closing off access to the Marina. It was a, it was a big concern. Yeah, that, Mr. Goldfinch. I got, I got the same cause for concern. I'm with Mr. Jordan. I think the event's great. I want it to happen. Is there a way to adjust the route? So, because that, you know, I know we closed down for the reindeer run. We closed down for, you know, the, the run, um, you, you know, uh, what's the other, under the lights. Um, but there's nothing going on at the Marina. And, and in early April, that is a busy time for his business. And, and I understand that, you know, the Father's Place, who does tremendous work in this community, is putting this on as a fundraiser, and I want that to happen. Um, I don't want it to impact negatively, um, you know, a business that, you know, this is their, their busy time. 
and I'm just I'm asking, is there a way to reroute that so people can just get to the get to the marina store if they want to? And I'll just add to that. Um, it's the access to the business is important, and just public access to that part of the marina. A lot of people pulling out their boats for the first time um, might be an issue. So I, I echo what we can we can work with them on that and bring it back if that's what you like. We, this route was worked very well for the police department. It requires less staffing than a 5K usually does, but we can sure. see if we can preserve that benefit and move the. And I think the message is that the council supports uh, this run, this 5K run for a father's place, but but I have to agree that it might interfere with a, a lot of access for business and public access to the marina. Okay. Yeah, we can see if we can, there's some different route or could use the river walk more or something. We can figure that out. I'm, I'm sure you'll come up with something. Okay. Thanks so much, Mr. Rogers. Do you want to defer the action? Yes. We'll need to, back the I move that we defer action on this item until such time as staff brings another route to us. Jordan, thank you. But properly seconded motion to uh, defer this item until we have more information. All in favor? Please indicate some of the showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. <coughs> item B, not 11B, recommendation on selection of a firm to complete the na nomination packages for the National <coughs> Register District Boundary Increase for the City of Conway Downtown Historic District and Waccamaw River Warehouse Historic District located in Downtown Conway. Ms. Hyman. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, these are two of the districts, National Register districts that we have in the City of Conway. And in the last few years, staff has had a lot of inquiries from property owners about expanding this district. Um, and so with that, with that, it gives them opportunity to apply for certain tax credits, um, there is the honor of saying that you're part of a National Register District. And the good thing about these downtown properties, they already have to go through the Community Appearance Board for review. So this isn't adding an extra level that they don't already have um, with that review process with Community Appearance Board. Um, this was discussed at budget retreat last year and funding was put towards it. Since that time, we advertised um, for proposals. We received three and city staff scored those and chose Rogers Lewis Law Firm out of Columbia, South Carolina, who has done work in this area previously. Um, and like I said, we have the funding for it already. So staff's recommendation is Rogers Lewis Law Firm and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Hymas. Are there questions or comments? I do have a question. Mr. White. <clears throat> if there are um, um, uh, houses that are, that are could be considered historic that's not downtown. Could they apply for some of these fundings? Yes, and what we're discussing today is just the downtown um, commercial district in the warehouse. We do actually have a residential historic district as well, and uh, homes can be individually listed as well. Thank you. Thank you. And is the threshold 50 years of age? 50 years, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> we'll just keep that to ourselves. All right. It's a joke. Um, I move then that we approve staff's re recommendation relative to um, hiring uh, the firm that you just named to work with us for um, an expansion of the National Register District boundaries. Is there a second? Mr. White. I'll oh, second. Have properly seconded motion to do the same. Any other comments? All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much, Ms. Thank Hyman. you. And already, Mr. Emmerich, we are ready for the administrator's report. All right, well, it seems like a lot longer ago, but it was just last week we had some major storm events which we survived very well. We had very little damage in the city at all. Um, and fortunately, most of the rain missed us, so we had no flooding associated with it. Uh, we are not clear of the weather yet. We've got very cold temperatures predicted for the rest of this week. And we are all looking forward to some warm and dry weather ahead. But um, just make sure you've got your heaters working and a backup plan for if there's any issues. 
Um, we receive, I think I routinely give you an update from Coastal Carolina Association of Realtors. They give us, they send me an update, um, I think about every quarter. Uh, I got the update today, and what we've, what we've learned is that the housing market has cooled slightly, but the prices have not on housing. New listings are down by 4.5% year over year. Um, closed sales are down by 12% days on the market until sold are up by a little over 6%, but the median sales price grew by 1.8%, which is usually counterintuitive. Um, as interest rates and hikes stop and maybe begin to fall, this should lead to some renewed energy in the housing market. And all forecasts still predict our area to grow exponentially in the, in the coming years. Um, the good news, I think, is that housing, the sales price did not drop, which means the market's still strong, even though it's not as um, robust, perhaps, as it was in the past. Um, I'm going to give you some stats, and then I'm going to give you the reason I'm bringing them up. And I think I've kind of I've talked a little bit about the success of October, of Halloween, and the success of December and Christmas. But um, we've got some new tools at our disposal that have given us some statistics to be able to, to uh, merit out some of the, the things we've done. During the month of December, we had nearly 110,000 people visit our downtown. That's the most visits we've ever had in any December ever that we can tell. The majority of the guests that we have that we had this December do not live in the city of Conway. 40% of the people that came of that 110,000 are to the two Conway zip codes, 60% are not, which means we're attracting um, people from outside of the, the Conway area into our market. Um, they are a close-knit market, so we're getting people from, from nearby in a short drive, not necessarily people from a long distance. We get some of those. The majority of the people that come, though, are a short drive. To give you a comparison of what 110,000 people compared to other years, um, I thought more, most productive to look at pre-COVID, because everybody kind of measures their success how were things before COVID and COVID affected things? So in 2019, we had 73,000 visitors in the month of December. And this year we had 110,000 visitors. So looking at the month of October, we had 123,000 people visit our downtown, which is slightly more than what we had in December. In the same time frame in 2019, we had 79,000 visitors. So again, a pretty substantial uptick in visits. So I bring these numbers up with optimism in mind because we're going to try something new for us. Um, we all know that Conway's pretty awesome, but have you ever thought about Conway as the best place in the area for date night? It is, it is February coming up, so Valentine's Day is upon us. Um, we want to make Conway your Valentine's Day destination. So February is traditionally a slow month for downtown, a slow month for retailers, and we're hoping that that will be changed this year. As you all know, we do the father-daughter dance every year. It is sold out. Conway Downtown Alive does the chocolate, <coughs> chocolate one. It is sold out. So the events that are already being done in Valentine's, the Valentine's Day area are already very successful. So we're adding movies at the terrace, um, themed Valentine's Day movies. We're doing Lady and the Tramp. We're doing the movie Valentine's Day and a few other movies. Um, those will start next Friday. Um, we're also creating many places for you to create your new profile pic whatever dating app you're using or your social media page or whatever else you're using and they will be on every corner just like they were at Christmas just like they were at Halloween we're, we're putting the test and the formula that we're creating so starting beginning this week and the next week you'll start to see Valentine's Day blossom in the city of Conway. Moving on from that spring sports registration is now open so make sure you register your child for any spring sport that they're interested in doing the Ride 4 discussion, the Ride 4 the topic that has been going on, um, uh, often now combined with the transportation sales tax, that, that process has moved on to public information meetings. They're being held throughout the region, but we're having one at the Planning and Construction Services Building um, in their meeting room on the 23rd at 4 p.m. So if you're interested in attending one of those meetings, add that to your calendar. Um, at the next meeting, we'll have a report from the junior mayor from the Youth Council. Um, so you, that'll be something to look forward to. And as I mentioned in the last few meetings, we are in absolute full swing budget planning mode now. Uh, if you have anything as council that you would like to see as research or included in the budget retreat for discussions, please get those to us. So we have time to be able to put them together, to be able to get cost estimates, or be able to research those items and make sure we have enough information for you at the retreat. And then lastly, we have department heads tonight from police and fleet. Do you have any questions for me before we move to them? I do. Okay. Um, I'd asked for some information about um, the opportunity for the city to establish 
uh, hate crimes bill. I think Chief Long is going to report on that a little bit in his report. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. The first, anyway, can I start with Rock? Okay. Right we'll go to Rock and then we'll go to Chief Long. Good afternoon, Mayor of Camp. Nice to see you all today. You don't see me very often, but I'm here. Uh, <laughs> give me a quick little rundown. Many people don't see me much, or my staff. We're kind of behind the scenes a lot. Um, just kind of introduce some of my employees. We got a council member. Uh, as of now, the Deputy Maintenance Department has eight employees, including myself. I have uh, Deputy Director, which is Bobby Boss, who's a longtime employee of the City of Conway. We have an Administrative Support Specialist. One, which is Crystal Bruce. We have four mechanics, um, Tony Collins, Brandy Danzer, Billy Brewer, and Sean Moon. Uh, I hate to say it, but I received paperwork this morning. Tony Collins, or Anthony Collins, is retired. Uh, last day of February will be his last day, and it's about 19 years. That's spark plug, isn't it? No. No. Spark plug left last year. Last year. Last year. Right. A lot of my employees, when I come in, were long time employees. Yeah. You're not running them. A lot of new so you're not running them away. Ma'am? You're not running them away. I hope not. <laughs> um, we were able to field a welder fabricator position. Uh, the gentleman's name there is Escobar Cruz Turner. Uh, seems to be doing great. We're getting there. We're trying to up our facility as far as build whatever fabricate we need to do for the city. Um, as of the fleet maintenance shop, we're responsible for fixing pretty much anything mechanically the city owns. Cars, trucks, lawnmowers, weed eaters, anything that the city has in their departments, back storage buildings and everything. Uh, back in November, we hired, we filled a position for the uh, the work came to talk. For the welder fabricator, we hired a gentleman from the Palm Jar School. Um, and like I said, he seems to be doing great. We're Good. moving right along. Um, parts. Last time I spoke was pre-pandemic. And parts is still part of it now, but they're a lot more available than what they were. There's still a lot of items. We can still no longer get it. Um, parts price, it has, was on a climb. There was looked to be no end. But it's leveled out. We can get them, but it's still way more than what it was pre pandemic. Um, right now, the maintenance shop is doing about 185 work orders a month, which is very busy. Um, as of now, our outside labor is some one thing we've been focusing on real hard since I've been here. Um, it's around 60, 65 percent drop this year so far compared to last year's budget. We still have six more months left, but we still drop a considerable amount. And that's a good thing. That keeps everything that we can in the city. Uh, be more than happy to answer any questions. I have one question. You have only four mechanics who yes, handled everything that has a motor. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you employ anybody who's uh, with lesser credentials to do some of the more simple kinds of tasks like oil changes and, and that sort of thing? We pretty much, I take the group of employees that I have and I utilize their talents. And sometimes we have to do things that we don't need to do or want to do, but that's what we gotta do to keep the ball rolling. Um, but I try to utilize everybody, treat them all equal. Even I'll have to get out there and change oil sometimes. Yeah, I know how to do it if you need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I still got once. Oh, I know how. Change the tire, too. Anyone else? Honest? Good. Thank you so much Thank for you. your report. Thank Thanks you, Thanks for all you do. And we have Chief Long. Welcome. Thank you for that, Mayor Mayor Council. I will, uh, Give him a little clap because a lot of that work is for us. Uh, our fleet is 24 7, always rolling, and he is doing our way to make magic happen. Uh, again, parts are extremely difficult to source and takes a long time to come in, and they are extremely expensive anymore, so uh, it is really crunching into the budget. Uh, I will start off by addressing the very first topic that 
language. You, you mentioned your public input there. I do have language uh, for a model uh, hate crime ordinance with the city of Conway. Uh, I have passed that up to our city attorney for review. Uh, just really piggybacking off of some of the other cities in the state. Um, but I've asked her specifically to look at some of maybe the legal challenges that they have had to make sure that they have a good um, constitutional standing before we try to enact it. And after her review, I believe that it will be a very short order after that. We will have a very good language for you, a good model. Um, some of them have actually been uh, tweaked over the years, a few adjustments and things, and I just perceive that that's probably from some legal challenges that they face. And I want to make sure that we're with the most current versions that we can be when we do present one. So it is forthcoming, and I don't think it'll be very long before we can have that before you. Our call for service in 2023 uh, held very steady. They were at 26,000. Uh, just uh, for comparison, say 2019, 2022 was only just under 400 more. So we're very consistent year to year to year. We're running about 26,000 cases that we do call for service on. Uh, good news is our heart wound crimes were down in every single category across the city, with the exception of B and E autos. And uh, it's called breaking in or an auto, but most of them are unlocked cars. They're not broken into. Uh, so please lock your cars. That's a PSA for the moment. Uh, those went from 45 to 62 last year, but our larcenies were down from 559, and I'm using 2022 as a comparison to 449. Aggravated assaults went from 107 to 72. Our stolen vehicles dropped from 63 to 38, and most of those are. Uh, left with a key in it, running at the gas pump or in front of the place. <laughs> like, please don't leave your car running like that. Hey, I'm not, not doing that. that. Uh, we went last year from three homicides in 2022 to none. We have one still pending from early December. Uh, but in our uh, review of the evidence and what we've discussed with the solicitor so far, it does appear that that will probably be a self-defense issue and will not go in as a, a homicide. Um, Staffing-wise, we started off the year last year at 100% staffing, but attrition happens and uh, we lost 12 over the course of the year, but we were able to hire eight to replace them. So we're a little bit behind where we were this time last year. Uh, we have another that is starting the 29th of this month, and we have three others finishing out testing. Uh, so they possibly could start that day as well. So if we were able to get all four of those started by that day, we would be back up to the full staff number that we had last year. Uh, we have 59 staff so far with five class three officers um, that do our desk and our evidence. We have a big math kit for civilian staff. Uh, some of our educational achievements for the past year, I got quite a few folks that are taking advantage of uh, tuition free at Irving Georgetown Tech to advance their degrees there. Uh, but we also have Lieutenant Chris Williamson who completed his bachelor's degree this past December from Liberty University and Lieutenant Jonathan McAllister completed his master's degree from Lander University. And in December, I think it was December 8th, uh, City of Conway was selected at the South Carolina Law Enforcement Conference. Uh, we received the Santee Cooper Excellence in Law Enforcement Award. Uh, that's a photo of really poor, grainy photo of uh, uh, me accepting the award from our outgoing president, uh, Skip Holbrook, who is the chief of police for Columbia. And we were selected from nominations across the state. I didn't give you the uh, nomination that was submitted. And as I put that together for our nomination, I nominated those. I, I really worked hard for us to be selected. And I looked at that and I was like, that's the stuff we do that's not the traditional law enforcement. And the amount of things that we do in our community, working with kids, engaging the, the youth of our communities through camps, uh, through other programs, things that we do, fundraising for Shop with a Cop or our Christmas to Remember, um, school supplies that we give out. It's just uh, unbelievable. How do like, we have time to even go home every day with the number of things, the sheer volume of things we do in our community. And Here's our work. That, is, that is nothing less than the uh, tremendous effort of every man and woman that works for the Conway Police Department. 
all I did was just compile the numbers and, uh, and uh, present it and was able to uh, defend and articulate why we were the best choice. So, and it is said, Chief, that it is a poor frog who fails to praise his own kind. Amen. So <laughs> you did the right thing. Yes, sir. I'll go oh. wherever you want to go. Mr. White. Who was first? Mr. Jordan. Just uh, quick, you said you lost 12 Two. officers last year. Um, were those officers that left the field or were those officers that left for? Yeah. Uh, at least a quarter of those are still in law enforcement in other surrounding agencies. Uh, others moved on to uh, some of the more lucrative markets of uh, things that are happening within the community. Again, we talk about the rise in the, the housing market, and um, that's lifted a lot of ships, and a lot of people jumped on board and are involved in those type of things. But uh, we do have a at least a quarter of them are still in law enforcement in the area that have left to go to other agencies. And, and those departures are more than likely financial reasons? Those agencies, everyone paid more than we do. Um, along that same line, Go ahead. if you don't mind, I'll forget otherwise. Um, Chief, uh, we were all made aware about a year ago that one of our sister cities was about to become the highest paying law enforcement uh, agency in the state. Um, did that ever happen? I don't know if they're the highest in the state. If they're not, they're definitely high. Uh, they're at sixty thousand dollars starting pay, twenty thousand dollars more than we are. I see. So a full you know, fifty percent of pay needs to, to go to another local agency. Mr. Goldfinch. Mr. Mr. White, then Mr. Goldfinch. My question was about a gun buyback program yes. that we started one time way yes. back when. Are we going to consider bringing that back? Yes. Uh, that was uh, one of those COVID things when we just were not having face-to-face -face contact. Uh, we had it planned year to year, and when we just had those breaks where we just didn't want people um, closer than social distance, it stopped. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Gomez. Two things. Um, I just want to add, in talking to a couple of my buddies that work for the sister agency, and we won't name names uh, or name the community because um, it doesn't matter. What they will tell you is, yes, they make a little more, but the work environment is a lot more. It's a lot more intense. It's not, it's not the same as it is here. And so, yeah, money's important. You got to feed your family. You got you know, housing is expensive. But it's not the same. You're not comparing apples to apples. And that's what people need to, to know before they make those decisions, number one. But for us that say, well, we don't pay as much as this particular town can. Um, it's a different job. Um, and then secondly, um, you, and you named a lot of the things that, that you guys do outside of policing, working with children. Um, I went to shop with a cop this year <laughs> because my wife was involved in that through the Kiwanis Club. And I'm going to tell you, if, if you want, um, if you just want a heartfelt, warming experience, go to shop with a cop next year. It is, uh, it helps you really put things in perspective. It is called Christmas to remember because it is a joint venture between us and the fire department. I, I misnamed it when I spoke a minute ago that I, I kind of cleaned it up correctly but didn't pick up on my first sentence. Uh, but it is a joint effort. We could not do it without the help and assistance of our, our partner with the fire department. And Kiwanis is a really big uh, community supporter. Um, they send manpower to help out. Uh, they do all the bagging and helping us do all the heavy lifting, getting things out to the trailer, and they, they contribute a substantial amount of money to support our ongoing efforts to be able to take care of our kids and our community. And if I might just say one beautiful thing about that effort, um, I only had an opportunity once to, to go to that, that event, and um, the unselfishness of children who get chosen to buy Christmas for themselves, but who think about their parents and their siblings and their grandmas and it's just heartwarming. It's humbling. Yes, it is. It's humbling to see them put the needs of others above themselves. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. It's always the third Saturday in December. We do it the week after the Christmas parade, so we can try to stay away from any conflicts with any other uh, big city events. So third Saturday in December. That's a long way away. 
So you shouldn't have any conflict. All <laughs> over this one than you. Thank you. Anything else? Else? Anyone else? Mayor, Mayor. Yes, please, Ms. I'd just like to also say, um, how many school resource officers do you have in place now? Seven. We, are, we have one in training, and once that one is finished with training in place, we will have a school resource officer in every school except the therapeutic learning center, and which is a, a, a very small venue, but we do respond to calls there, but it's, it's much, much smaller with uh, the attendance that's there, mm -hmm. the needs there are very different. Uh, so we do respond, but we don't have one place yet, but we will be 100% placement. Uh, she is in week two at the academy, or we finished pre-academy and everything, but she will be placed and ready to go probably in early May to finish out the school year, get her school assignment, and then we'll have them in every single school in the city. And the school well, you speak that? I'm sorry. Please well, I'm just going to say those officers do a tremendous job and what they do in those schools is tremendous and I had the opportunity to see um, at a local school uh, recently and just the interaction with, with um, just a group of kids and they just did a phenomenal job. I so thank, I'm very proud of our city. They're, they're for, their own son, yes, I'm very proud of our city for, for putting school police officers in our schools. I was just going to ask if that one exception is on Sherwood Drive. I'm sorry. The, the one school that would, will not have a police uh, resource officer. Is that the one on Sherwood Drive? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It's just a very, um, a unique, the, the needs there are different. And yes. And the attendance there is much, much smaller, very uh, self-contained yes. uh, with the environment that they have there. And they don't even go up above fifth grade, I believe. Yeah. So they are modeled in an elementary school. Might be the first year, might be sixth grade, but they do not, they definitely do not go up into late, middle, or high school. They don't have kids there that old. Thank you so much. Okay. We appreciate you. Sure. And all you do. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on the, on the agenda is council input, and I believe uh, that we will first hear from Ms. Hardwick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Again, I just want to thank the, the departments that presented tonight. It's always it's always good to hear what what are, what we're doing. Um, I'm excited to hear about the Valentines and what is coming. We also had some uh, tremendous events over the past weekend with the celebration of Martin Luther King um, holiday. Um, we've got y'all. We've got some really good things going, and I think. Um, the, the proactive stands we take as far as our hate crimes and, and acknowledging and talking about these things, I think that is is a, a bridge to prevent um, disasters we see in other communities. Um, and I'm very proud to be part of this council and to be a, a, a member of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Harper. Mr. Jordan? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just <coughs> briefly, thank you to uh, staff for the, the hours that were put in this past week in preparation for yeah, what yes. we dodged a bullet with. Um, yeah. Yes. And, and the sanitation guys and the girls that uh, worked all day Saturday to, to catch that route up. Um, so while we were all, all home, um, yeah, they, they were out uh, running routes on Saturday. So we, we certainly appreciate that. But uh, that's, that's all I have to add. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Goldfinch. Yes, ma'am. Um, we're having a schedule. I was going to see. If I could give y'all a brief ride update. Sure, please. Um, but before I do that, I do want to thank, um, and, and if I leave somebody out, please forgive me, but Larry and Amanda are on the committee that planned the program that happened yesterday. That was, and I don't make all of them. I'll be, I'll be, I'd love to, but you know, some years you just, you, anyway. That's, of the years I've been on council and attended those, not only did you celebrate, but you informed and the lady that spoke, you know, I had to slip out at the very end, but the lady that spoke at the, on the front end, I mean, there was history from Wilmington. There was history there I'd never heard of. It was very informative. And so I hope that you all will continue that trend to not only celebrate, but educate. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. And all right, so um, <clears throat> most, most of you know, I'm Conway's, look, Conway's representative for the Ride 4 program. Um, we are well into this. As Adam alluded to, we do have um, our first public information meeting next Tuesday, the 23rd. 
There's going to be six of them all across Ory County. Conway has the privilege of hosting the first one right over here in this building at 4 o'clock. This is an opportunity for you to come and hear what's different this time. This county over the last 20, 22 years has had three different ride programs. Ride is an acronym for, oh goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, it, 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 it'll come to me in a minute. Um, where we've ra raised money over a period of seven years <clears throat> to fund infrastructure projects that we need in this community. The challenge with that has been there are big regional countywide projects that we need, i.e., we need a southern evacuation lifeline. We need an additional Conway River crossing. We need to get Interstate 73, which is permitted, by the way, going so that the state and federal government will step in and finish out Marion and, 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 and Dillon County. Um, there are a lot of really big expensive projects that are going to take a really long time that we need to get the ball rolling on. But to do that, you can't fund that in seven years. And so instead of a ride project, we're looking at a 25-year transportation tax. It's the same thing that we pay now. Ride 3 will end. This is not an additional tax, number one. This is just a continuation of what we've been doing for 20-something years, okay? Number two, and this is important for people to understand, nearly 60% of the money raised will come from, guess who? Tourists tourists that come to the Grand Strand. And so we recognize the need for more infrastructure. Um, and this is an opportunity for all of you to come. Um, Coast RTA, which is a big part of our community, um, serves a big part of Conway, um, has the potential to get a substantial amount of money to enhance their facilities, to enhance, to enhance their routes the timing of their routes, uh, and just to add resources so that they're more efficient in serving the folks that need to use Coast RTA. Um, so it's an important time to come. That's my update. I would encourage you to so you can educate yourself and others and provide input, okay? I mean, that's what this is for, is to provide input um, to those of us that are on the ride committee. Um, and, and finally, um, I, I'm, I'm excited about um, Valentine's, I tell you, you know, I say this um, not as much as Sally is. That's, she says, well, you know, that's the sweetest day of the year, and um, all, you know, every year. And, um, but I just appreciate y'all doing one more thing, and I'll, I've said this many times, and I'll keep saying it because it's true. I'd much rather be in a position that I have to tell you, the administration, no, we're not yet, or we're not ready, or that's too much, tone it down than to have an administrative team that has no creativity or vision. So thank you, that's all I got. Thank you so much. If I might ask you, your, the public hearing on Tuesday the 23rd is where? At four o'clock at our, where we were the uh, planning and planning. Planning building, thank you so much. That's the former drug court right mm -hmm. across the street. Thank you so much, Mr. White. Okay, um, two or three things. I, I received that email from uh, Mr. Nye <clears throat> as well, and I would love for us to consider his recommendation of moving that earth, if possible. Uh, and the wall height of, I think it's eight feet? Nine, yeah, okay. Um, secondly, the, the folks about the uh, Michaela Drive area, um, that area that bringing that road through there, that's gonna be more cars going through that traffic, I mean, through their communities, and will it affect our city shop? Would there be a road that's going through the city shop road? There's some, some of those are bigger issues we can talk about at the next workshop, I think. Um, okay. Those will be some recommendations we can staff on those. Thank you, sir. And um, at Bethel next Tuesday, Monday night, uh, Monday afternoon, is it 4.30? Yes. We're having a community interfaith meeting, uh, and I did say community interfaith. I mean, all churches are welcome to come, and we'll discuss things about the election and voting and praying for the community as well. So if you would please stop by Bethel next Monday, 4.30 p.m. if possible. And lastly, um, the League of Cities meeting is Thursday. 
And where is it? At Fifth and Main. Fifth, Fifth and Main, yes. We'd love for all our council members to come to that meeting. Um, and if we have concerns, please bring them up. Um, my biggest concerns is, are going to be um, the cross printing of the um, an ordinance, hate crime ordinance, and um, maybe even gun back, back programs for all of the communities. Um, we shouldn't be the only one that's doing this because a lot of the shootings that's happening are not in Conway. But other communities need to get on board and do, this, do likewise. So that would be a great venue to discuss some of these issues at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Six Thursday. At six o'clock this Thursday at fifth and main. Thank you, Mr. White. Ms. Butler. Uh, nothing for me tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Ms. Helms. I don't think I have anything either. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and I don't either. I, I would just like to reiterate the League of Cities. Um, uh, I know that um, most of us have more than one job and uh, we get stretched out pretty severely, but over the years, uh, Conway's participation in the League of Cities has um, watered down to pretty consistently um, two people, um, where uh, so many other municipalities come in, in great force. It's just, it's as much a, an opportunity to fellowship and compare notes and have a good meal together, and we only do it quarterly, so I, I would just like to reiterate that invitation to come and take part in the League of Cities meeting, mm -hmm. and I think that's all I have at this point. Um, may we, I, may yes. I add one more thing? Absolutely. I'd like to welcome also a special welcome to Conway High School, Desmond and Destiny Porterfield, who are here um, being our student reporters for the high school. And the only reason that I didn't call them out is because Destiny and Desmond come, and their grandmother or, or their mother, come to every city council meeting. They've been coming for months, for months. I don't know which one is going to run for city council first. Why don't y'all stand up for us, please? <laughs> Thank you so much. Desmond and um, Destiny, uh, they're twins. I go to church with them. They were my youth ushers, and they're not really like little youth anymore. But um, anyway, we are delighted that you're here. Thank you so much, Ms. Hardwick. At this point, we're going to take a brief two-minute break for personal uses. Uh, we're, then we're going to go into a workshop at five. We have no workshop. We can skip that. Oh, the workshop is not going to happen. After oh, which, I'm sorry. We do have a workshop. <laughs> But after the right, but after the break. So during the workshop, everybody's welcome to come and take part and 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 certainly listen if nothing else. Um, but afterwards, we'll go into executive session for these two reasons: a, is consideration of appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. <clears throat> We're going to go into executive session for uh, to consider appointments to boards, commissions, and committees pursuant to South Carolina Code Section 3470A1 and discuss, to discuss employment of city administrator pursuant to South Carolina Code Section 3470A1, after which time we will reconvene if any action is to be taken based on anything that was discussed in executive session and uh, then we will adjourn. So. Please stay around if you've got the time, and if not, we understand. Thank you for your presence and your involvement and your concern about your own city. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon.
Hey, y'all got nothing left, don't we? Here, thank you. You know what? Here you go. We're still stuck together. Yeah. Way more time. Thank you. 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 Ready. Yes, I guess. I'm ready. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she was very talkative. Two minutes up. I think everybody is here. We're missing Larry. Larry. Okay, thank you. They always are. Thank you, Jordan. You guys good with that for Thursday night? Thursday night? Yeah. 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 That's after they process you and everything. She was earlier. It was a but it wasn't like that. It was Yeah. Yeah. She was sitting there. Two minutes. Back to order. Mr. Emmerich, please. Sure, we have one item for workshop that I, I did not remember we had on this workshop. It's, it's about estate lots. I'm going to turn it over to Jessica. Thank you so much. Um, so the past year we've had a, a few requests about doing estate lots. Estate lots, they're large lots, typically five acres or greater. Um, within developments or subdivisions, they're known for generous sizes. Custom-built luxury homes are, are usually built on them. They're designed to provide property owners with exclusive um, living environments. They typically feature upscale amenities such as gated entrances, private roads, landscaping, and community facilities like parks and trails. Um, they're found in both urban and suburban areas. They're often located um, in close proximity to amenities like golf courses, country clubs, or water parks. Uh, staff was unable to find counties or, or was able to find counties or cities with ordinances that mentioned the state in their definition of a zoning district, um, but included rural, as in rural estate law in their code. Uh, Greenville County has a rural estate lot development option, which is not necessarily a zoning district as much as it is a development design, sort of like the Collins Valley Conservation Subdivision, um, which was approved um, last year. Um, early last year, um, which is a conservation subdivision design. It's a by right development in several of our, our zoning districts. Um, some places have districts that are have zoning districts classified as rural estates, which is intended for single family detached units on large estate lots. 
And those districts are typically reserved for truly rural areas, which this could be is a truly rural area um, where you have a lot of county mixed in in the city. Um, this has come about a couple of times, um, particularly with regard to this one. Tract H, which is on that plan, is located on Randall Road, which is currently unimproved. Um, the city was approached about allowing estate lots, five acres or more in size, within the Collins Drawing Development, which is also bound by the development agreement. And after discussing several options with staff, and while any new ordinance would not necessarily benefit the tract in Collins Drawing, which is tract H on that plan, staff wanted to bring this issue to council to see if there was an interest in developing either a rural estate zoning district or drafting an ordinance for a rural estate lot development which could be similar to the conservation subdivision design ordinance some of the things that could be considered if someone chose if that was adopted to do a rural estate development um, to incentivize it would be to lessen the roadway standards with the requirement to pay being maintained, not requiring curb gutter or sidewalks for the road internal to the subdivision, exempting, exempting street trees could be another incentive as the overall intent of having the design choice is to encourage large lots with large areas remaining undeveloped or undisturbed. Another option discussed was to allow residential development in the conservation preservation zoning district, which right now, it is not a district that allows residential development unless it is done as a conservation subdivision. Um, but the ordinance could be amended to allow single-family detached units on five acres in greater in conservation preservation. Um, again, while they're looking at many different options and seeing what was out there, even if that was something that we could do or could adopt, I don't really feel that it would benefit um, Collins Jolly because that was already developed as a conservation subdivision. They're already utilizing a design. Um, I don't know if you, do you have a slide that we could, I was going to just kind of show what was being proposed there. That particular tract H, they want to reduce the amount of blocks that would be developed significantly. Um, but whereas the development agreement for Collins Jolly uh, requires that all open space and conservation areas um, be platted separately and given to a third party entity um, conservation group, it could be the city of Conway that's given a conservation easement, it could be Ducks Unlimited that they give it to, um, what they would like to do would be to take those lots and include the wetlands and the flood zones within each five acre or greater tract. The problem with that um, is the open space requirements would be lessened for the entire conservation subdivision and those require a greater percentage. Um, so that's the issue with allowing it there, is that you have to make sure that the entire conservation subdivision, which is utilized and developed by several different entities, it's not the same developer, there's developers for different tracks, they could be affected if you allowed it here. But because this has come up, we wanted to bring it to council's attention and kind of get their thoughts on it and see if it was something that they would um, be interested in pursuing um, in general um, for other areas, other large tracks down the road. So how did this come up? We had a developer who was actually wanting to purchase Tract H um, he's approached us a few times, um, and he wants to do estate lots. Randall Road, which goes to Tract H, is not improved. Um, we would require it be completely improved, as well as the lot within the subdivision. Um, the road would not be improved totally to uh, city standards. Now, the option of asking for a design modification, which is like a variance from land development regulations and planning commission could consider that, is always an option, and that might be something that they would have to consider here. Um, but it would reduce the lot significantly. Um, not, do not re recount the exact number, but I believe it's like 20 or 25 lots versus the 111 lots. Obviously, that's a, a significant reduction, and staff would be in support of the reduction. The issue that we face is that this is under a development agreement. 
This is also a master site plan that was approved as part of the conservation subdivision design. There's a lot of legalities that go in. So every time somebody submits a plan, let's say, let's say Builder A buys one tract and then Builder B buys several other tracts. When they submit their plans, we have to make sure that it complies with the master plan because there was a lot of effort that went into making sure that that plan met all of the conservation subdivision standards. So when you have a significant change, sorry, go ahead. I'm confused. Is lot H a part, is, is, is all of this under one it's development agreement? Yes. yes. Okay. So, so he wants to parcel out lot, I mean, excuse me, block H and build estate lots. Okay. What he would like to do is, is to buy that. Still, it will still be part of the conservation subdivision. The difference is, is that the lots would include the wetlands, whereas right now under a conservation subdivision, they're platted out and a third party takes ownership. They could potentially put a conservation easement over the wetlands, so they would still be in individual lots, but there would be a conservation easement added. Um, I think that's the way to do it. The problem with that is every time we've had wetlands on people's lots, people don't respect the easement or the fact of the wetlands, and they fill them in and know we can't do anything about it. And Army Corps won't do anything about it. We've had several subdivisions, but we actually have changed our standards and not allow wetlands on people's lots because of that. Um, everybody wants to expand their yards, so they just keep taking liberties, mowing it back a little further every time, and before long you don't have a wetland anymore. All right, what would be the harm in pulling Block H out of the development agreement? Um, you could do that. That would have to, they'd have to go back through the process. But my concern with that is that tract, along with Track B, has a lot of the conservation area and a lot of the open space that's required for a conservation subdivision is within those lots. So when you do that, you're lessening overall the amount of open space and the conservation areas that were otherwise required in order to make it work. Yeah. So then the lots that have more density could be affected and their plan <coughs> might be impacted as well. So, okay, I see what you're saying. So a lot of the, right, a lot of the open spaces that, that would otherwise, that's an H, mm -hmm. accounts for the open space that's needed in F. And if you take that open space out of H, then you don't satisfy the open space needed for F. Correct. Right, okay. Yes. Now I'm picking up what you're saying. Yeah, there, there, the density is allowed in the track C, for example. There's more density there than you have in maybe track B or track H. But that's because you take the entirety of all the open space and conservation area. So these are really two separate issues. You're asking us if we want to do a, a totally different type of ordinance. But with this, it sounds like it's already been packaged and sold as you know one bill of goods. It would be very tricky to pivot for these this specific requests. Could he not add, I mean, reduce the number of lots but keep the same format of the range and stuff? Could it not be instead of having 10 lots here, there's three. There's 10 here. I'm just saying, could we just combine these lots to make them bigger but keep the same? I think a lot of the wetlands are in the middle of the lots. Right. So you'd be making very shallow, large lots okay. within it, which, which is theoretically possible, but maybe not practical. I'm, I'm real interested in us considering this for future uses in places that haven't already been uh, accepted as a, not PD, but a conservation, conservation um, district. And, that, and that's the thing, is that it's a great, it, it would be great if we had these larger tracks that did want to do estate lots that are five acres or greater, especially if they do contain flood zones or wetlands, but having a conservation easement possibly placed on top of them that the city of Conway um, would have, not that, that doesn't mean that they still wouldn't try to, to fill them in. There's always that possibility, um, but we would need to incentivize it somehow. Um, and one thing that staff thought of was, uh, you know, the road requirements you have to do curb, gutter, sidewalks. There's a lot that goes into, and that is quite expensive. 
today. What if, and, and forget this right here for a second, what if somebody goes and buys a piece of property and does exactly what you're describing? And they say, we want five acre estate lots. Um, yes, there's wetlands in there, but that's, that's part of it. And, and, and we, we want to live in the country, but be in the city and, um, and have that protection from other neighbors and privacy, et cetera. And, and you alluded to this earlier, a lot of these types of subdivisions do have gates. Um, so I'm assuming that the roads inside would, would belong to... They'd have to be private at that point, which they'd we have don't to be, allow. Which we don't allow. Mm -hmm. And because if it's private, we can't guarantee that we can get our fire trucks and, That's part of and garbage trucks. And we and wouldn't allow a gate on a public road. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, the, I think the reason Jessica brought this to you is this would be a mechanism to allow private roads if we're doing it as a condition of a five acre estate lot subdivision or four acre or eight acre or whatever you choose to do. You'd be basically creating a new set of design standards for this particular type of development. What's the name of that subdivision? Bucking over near Coastal. Bucking near Coastal. Yeah, is that, that would kind of fall? To the county, Some, I can't Yeah, right, right, I don't know how big the lots are out there. But that would kind of be the concept. Yeah. Same concept, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I like the idea of moving forward with that, you know, because if, if, if me and, you know, if I had four other brothers decided, you know, we want our family to live on this piece of property and I want to have a private area and I want to have my five acres and he has his five and five and, you know, I, I don't. I don't care about curb and gutter. I mean, I, yeah. And the one thing I mean, that we did think of um, today is if we, if it was a zoning district and everybody had, let's say, ten acres and it was fifty acres, the issue that you might run into down the road, 10, 15 years later, is they might sell it and then the person might submit plans to divide it even further. So what we thought was just like a conservation subdivision ordinance has standards, you have to have a final plat, there's a lot that it has to go through that maybe a design option would be better because then on the final plat you would have certain restrictions that could additionally prohibit further subdivision of that property <coughs> as well. change all the needs that that property holds mm -hmm. if they were to be subdivided. And again, I don't think that it would affect this Collins Jolly um, tract. I'm actually meeting with the um, developer tomorrow to talk about this specific. I think the biggest issue is the improvement of Randall Road um, going to these lots, which I understand is not improved at all. Um, so it would need to be paved to the extent at which that would that could potentially be something Planning Commission could look at, but it would need to at least be. 24 foot of pavement, the curb and gutter and sidewalks and street trees. The ordinance already exempts lots that have, or subdivisions that have an average lot size of an acre or greater from even having to do sidewalks. Um, so subdivisions where you do have those larger lots would not have to do, would not have to do sidewalks anyway. Um, so that would be a benefit here, um, but I don't see how we can allow a different design on top of a track that's already bound by certain standards now. Well, conservation subdivisions are designed to cluster smaller lots to preserve larger areas. And what we're saying here is we're going to create larger areas within a conservation mm -hmm. subdivision. Just it's right. kind of a counter. So double unless they wanted to go back to, you know, just amend the whole thing, the whole out. thing, yeah. I, I think you gotta you know, stick with it. And staff is recommending that planning commission do review this. There is a standard in the development agreement that um, allows or requires review by planning commission every 12 months. Um, because there have been a, quite a few changes, um, we are wanting to take this back through planning commission just to make them aware of that. And this applies to major subdivisions only? To yeah, I mean, it would, yeah. 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 <clears throat> but that's all I have. I just want to kind of. Um, and you'll keep us advised of. I'm guessing you wanted her to work on the state law design. I think for the future. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Think, I can see it happening. Yeah. I can't see it happening here. Yeah. But I think right. it might be something yeah. that we're confronted with time and time again in the yeah. future. Yeah. Yep. I'll work on that. Now. Thank um, you. And it may be too soon for this, but it, I think it would be. 
um, to kind of research is the, the large animals, a horse or some type of animal in your five acres in that subdivision. Yeah, we do have some, sub um, some districts that allow for that, but you also have a minimum lot size, mm -hmm. so that could potentially be something, depending on the location, that um, mm -hmm. would incentivize yes. it as well. I want a horse in Chikora. <laughs> you can't. Hey, hey, you are. I got a horse right there. Just, just come on in. Right, just, thank you, just, thank you, just, Come on yeah. in time. That's, thank you so much. That is the only workshop item there. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So, so move. Is there a second? Yeah. All in favor? Uh, uh, say uh, aye. Uh, okay. That's yours. I, I don't know. A man that's
<laughs> so they, what was that? They kept saying they were like, was it for executive session? I believe we're back. Somebody, right, one of the people, the guy, the guy that taught about Michaela Akers, kept we're talking about what he yeah. heard from our executive session. He was not fun. He was a workshop. We're live. We're live. Okay, all right. So, I believe that we come out of executive session. Julie seconded it, and we have a unanimous vote to come out. Uh, I would now move that we accept the uh, application uh, for the Water Quality Commission of Jackie Taylor. Jackie Taylor. I move that we accept uh, her willingness to continue to serve Mr. Goldman. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Or hand. And that is unanimous. We'll now entertain a, a yes, sir, Mr. George. Yeah, and let's go home. Uh, I so move we uh, adjourn this meeting. That's right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you so much for Thank you guys very much. Good night. 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 Good night.